Welcome to another Doodly Pro blah 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 blah. So here we are once again in 3D Studio Max. And the great thing about caustics is they not only look really sweet, but it's really easy to get a basic setup for them. You only need a few ingredients to get a basic caustic render. All you'll need is a light, something to generate the caustics, and then something to receive the caustics. And if we switch to my camera here, pull up a render, it's just that easy and I got some nice glass looking text and some crazy cool looking caustics down below. So now you see how easy it is to get this started. Let's go ahead and take a look of how to create this type of effect. I'm going to go up and reset my scene. Yes. No. Yes. Trick questions. So here we are. We open a brand new scene in 3D Studio Max and the first step is the most important. Always look both ways before crossing the street and then make sure you switch your render engine to Mental Ray. This is only going to work for you in Mental Ray. So go ahead, open up your render setup, go to the Common tab, and scroll all the way down to the bottom, and assign render. Make sure it's on Mental Ray. Mine is already set for Mental Ray, so I'm good to go. Now that we switched over to the Mental Ray renderer, we need to set a few things up and we can render away. First, I'm going to maximize my viewport. And then we'll need something to catch the caustics. In this case, I'm just going to make a floor out of this plane. Then we will need something to generate our caustics. So I'm going to go drop down standard primitives and go to extended and grab my favorite little object, the torus knot. Little guys never let me down. Okay, I'm just going to set it on the surface. Looking good so far. Last step is just to grab a light, go into our light tab, drop down photometric and just switch to standard, grab an omni light and we'll just put it kind of in the back, just put it in the back and up over here. Then also what I want to do is go into my modify tab with the light selected, drop down the intensity tab and change the decay type to inverse square. When you use the inverse square decay, you generally get more realistic light behavior. So I already know this plane's not going to be big enough, so I'm just going to scale it up. Perfect. Take a quick render. It's not looking bad. I'm going to bring a second light over by holding down shift and dragging to duplicate. I'm going to keep this one farther away and that will be our fill light. So we've got this two point light setup going on here. Now that we have light set up, we can go ahead and slap some materials on here. I'm going to move up to my material editor. So I'm just going to throw a default gray material on the ground here. Then I'll go to the next slot over and this is going to be our glass. So click where it says standard. Now my test render I used the glass physics phenomenon material. But there's a possibility not everybody has that material. And for those of you who don't, stick around to the end of the tutorial because I'll be showing you a way you might be able to get that material for yourself. For now I'm just going to stick to water. Sure it's not glass but it'll do what we need it to. So here we go, I'm going to drag that onto our torus knot, take a render. Sure, that looks enough like glass to me. Now that we've prepped everything and we're ready to go, all that's left is to activate the caustics. So to enable caustics, you need to go up to your render setup. And then inside your render setup, you need to go to your indirect illumination tab. Scroll down and find caustics and global illumination. You want to look where it says caustics and check enable. Now if you render right after that, you'll notice that 3ds Max throws a fit and tells you that there's no caustic generators in the scene. Okay. And you'll see when it renders, nothing has happened. That's because we need to tell 3D Studio Max what object in the scene is generating our caustics. So there's two ways we can do this. We can go into our scene and select our glass torus knot object. Right click on it. Go to object properties. Under the mental ray tab and tell it to generate 
caustics, or we can go back in our render setups tab, scroll down even farther, then enable caustics to till you find the geometry properties and check all objects generate and received GI and caustics. This is the easy way to do it. You may run into some instances though where you don't want all of your objects to generate caustics. So let's hit the render button and see what magic awaits us. Now it doesn't look like much happened here, but if you zoom in extra close and look really closely right here, maybe you'll be able to see it, maybe you can't. There's a little light on the ground, which means we're headed in the right direction. So now, after following all the previous steps and you still can't see any caustics being generated in the scene, it's most likely because of your decay. Your decay is how fast the light photons generating caustics die out. Or you can just think of the simple way and think of this as the caustic brightness. You usually want to keep the decay in between one and two. So the way the decay works is the lower the number, the brighter the caustics will be. The higher the number, the more subtle the caustics will be. So now that I'm rendering this out at one, we'll see what happens. That's a bit overkill if I do say so myself. I'm gonna stick with something more like 1.4. There, that's much better. Now that's the decay setting. The other settings you want to pay close attention to are average caustic photons per light and a maximum number of photons per sample. Now when you look at the max number of photons per sample, basically the higher the number will be a longer render time and the caustics will be a lot softer. The lower the number, the caustics will be a lot sharper. And your average caustic photons per light is your caustic's accuracy. So if we boost this number, so now our results are starting to look a lot cooler. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the basics to setting up caustics in 3D Studio Max. Before we go, there's a few other fun things you can play around with. One is to change the color of your object. We'll in turn change the color of your caustics so we can go to our material editor and our glass I'm making quotation symbols with my fingers. Stream power. Just change our color here. Something like yellow. And another thing that affects the way our caustics are displayed is the geometry of our object. So if we go Make sure we're in the Modify tab, scroll down to where it says Smooth. We can change it to something like Sides or None. And when we render, you can see that we get some very different results. That is it for this part of the tutorial. For those of you that want to stick around and figure out why you may or may not have the Glass Physics Phenomenon shader, that part of this tutorial is coming up right now. Welcome to the part of the tutorial where we go looking for the Glass Physics Phenomenon shader. Right now I'm using the 64-bit version 3ds Max 2010 and this is on Windows 7. So a while ago I realized it didn't show up in 3ds Max and I figured they just relocated it or took it out or replaced it with something, but no. I found that it's actually in there somewhere. You just have to go find it. I'm gonna go through real quickly and show you how to find Mental Ray's Glass Physics Phenomenon. So let's go up my render settings here and go to Sign Render and make sure it's on Mental Ray. And if we look at my material settings, we can see that I definitely do not have it. It should be right around here. Physics Phenomenon, Glass. I got Pro Material Solid Glass, but that's just not it. So let's close this out. What you want to do is you want to bring up your program files. This might work for other versions too if you're missing this material as well. But you want to click on 3ds Max 2010. Scroll down and find Mental Ray. And in the Mental Ray folder, we're going to find, you want to find the folder that says Shaders Standard. Go to include. So within this folder, all these .mi files are your mental ray material files. So we're gonna scroll down here, I think it's towards the bottom. We're gonna look for physicsfen.mi. So you're gonna right click on that, tell it to open with, you probably won't get the notepad right away for recommended program. So just drop down other programs and find your 
notepad, press OK, and it's going to open up all this text. So when you have the notepad open, go ahead and press Control plus F on the keyboard. It'll bring up the finder, and all you have to do in here is type in glass. Find. And uh, it's not this one. You're looking for this one right here. It says UI name glass physics fen. And now if you look down right below it, it says hidden in quotes. So now all we need to do is change it from hidden and tell it to show. Then we go up to file and save. But there you go. Just make sure you are changing the glass physics phenomenon and not any of the other ones. Initially, the first time I did this, I wasn't paying attention and I accidentally changed the invisible physics phenomenon shader to show. And let me tell you, an invisible shader does exactly what it says. Makes things invisible, which is incredibly unuseful. So now, yep, make sure that's saved, close out. Don't need this anymore. Now all we need to do is restart 3ds Max. Oh, not this again. And when that's all started up to check to make sure it works, all we need to do just go to your render settings, sign render, make sure we're on mental ray and not scan line. Good. And then our material editor. And look at that, the glass physics phenomenon shader. So that's all for this video. For more awesome 3D tutorials, go ahead and hop over to youtube.com slash doodlypro. There's a couple other tutorials over there that might catch your fancy. But until the next time.